Welcome back to Collider Videos, Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. recap show. It is the season premiere of season three. Very excited to break this down for you today. I'm Will Link. To my left. Hey guys, I'm Aaron Fenton. Obviously my hair changes with my mood. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hey guys, my hair will remain the same at all times. I am Michael Medina. And I'm Mark Ellis, and my God, this is a nice studio you guys got here. Ah, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thanks for joining us. I'm liking this. <laughs> I l I'd like to think, Aaron, that your, uh, you took the fish oil, and your inhuman ability is, yeah, mood hair. It's I feel like that's a really good one. Uh, I'm actually a goblin sewn up into a human suit. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, let's get right to this. Um... <laughs> I think it's important for a season premiere to do two things. I think one is to kind of hit a little bit of a reset button on where we're at in the in the world of these characters. And two, it also kind of has to hit the ground running. It has to throw us right into that action. And to me, the opening scene of this, where we see uh, poor Joey, the newest inhuman, uh, uh, trying to figure out his powers, it did just that. Uh, did anyone else think that Joey looked like Ward? Oh, uh, there's some similarities, I'm sure. I mean, he had the the the, the, the scruff, scruff on his face, and yeah, you know, he was kind jaw. of a str yeah strong, you know, built guy or whatnot. But uh, I loved that opening scene. Yeah, I thought it was really well done. Like you said, like hit the ground running. I know, like I've said this before. Sorry, I was not a fan of the initial 15 or so episodes <laughs> of season one, but then the show got better, and I loved season two. I thought it was so much better, and I just thought, wow, this is a hell of a way to start off the season, especially considering how last season left off. I was pumped for yeah, it. Yeah, and as a sporadic viewer of the show of uh, from season two and season one, seeing that opening sequence really got me locked into it, not just because I feel like the Joey of you guys right now, where <laughs> I'm still getting my bearings <laughs> and looking at your guys all special abilities but once Joey actually links up with the agents of shield and seeing them come in and seeing sky whoops I mean Daisy come in for the first time like using her powers yeah. to help him escape that 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 predicament I thought that was a really impressive way to open a season the special yeah. effects were great yeah that was another thing you could see the budget has gone up here on the effects mm -hmm. you could see that they're, they're I interrupt oh, oh no I oh my god oh. I, uh, hi guys, I'm John. Who's that? Is that your camera? That's my uh, camera uh, right there. there I gotta say, I am infamous for thinking Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is a bag of shit show. Oh my god. Oh no, oh no. Keep it real. I'm Here infamous comes. for that. I watched tonight's episode with these guys. You didn't get past 15? I really liked it. Oh really? Oh, yeah! I really, I, I just, I just had there to insert myself in the show to say, holy shit, even I really like this episode. <laughs> so I, and that beginning, sorry, because you were talking about the yeah. beginning. They put that beginning online earlier this week, yeah. and we watched it. I'm like, "This can't be Agents of Shield!" <laughs> Holy crap, it's Agents of Shield! And then the whole episode was really good. So that's all. I'm gonna leave it back to the guys who really know how to talk about Agents of Shield. Now, I just had to throw in that even I thought this was a great episode. Of Agents so, Mom, well, if you can change, John's been. You are clearly doing something right that's here. A ringing endorsement yes. right there. Who uh, who was that guy? I don't know. I don't know. He hangs some around the studio sometimes. <laughs> um, but, you know, okay, so there's also some mystery set up in this opening. Because, one, you're starting to see, oh, here's this guy with this power that's that's melting things. And he's really desperate. I thought the actor was giving a really great performance. But then also, a different team comes in. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they come in and try to contain him. And they're willing to use, like, lethal force if necessary, which is something that S.H.I.E.L.D. would not want to do in this scenario. Which is interesting because, naturally, you see something like this and you just think, oh, these are the bad guys. Which, later on in the episode, we discover... Well, we don't really know their motives yet, yeah. but we know that they are not the ones that are killing the Inhumans. Well, later on, we'll talk about that yeah. in a second, but um, I want to say her name is uh, Constance Zimmer, Constance I Zimmer. Coming into play, uh, Rosalind Price, I believe. Badass. Amazing. She, she was good. really good. She was tough. Constance Zimmer's been, uh, and she actually had a pretty good year on television in general. She was on that Lifetime show, uh, <laughs> Unreal. Yeah. But she's gotten a lot of buzz for that, and she's, she's good at playing entourage. this entourage. She's good at playing an icy yes. kind of, you know, dare I say, bitchy character. Like, she owns that. Yeah. And she would, she did fantastic in this episode. You know, they really had me going. I really thought that they were going to be the human group that uh, kidnapped all the Inhumans and, like, medically, like, tore them open to medically enhance uh, humans to become like super powerful humans, but that's not what they did at well, all. Well, there was some misdirect in that too. Yeah, they did a good job in this episode of misdirect because you see the scene where they have all the dissected bodies 
uh, lying there. Yeah. So you're like, well, clearly they're the ones doing all this. They're responsible for the missing five that Colson can't yeah. find. It was such a smart setup, too, uh, to try to hook viewers for an entire season where you set up these two camps that are warring, but you're not necessarily sure who is actually fighting for the side of good or if either one of them's evil or they're both good. Like, they made it a very clear point to say this is not a Hydra situation. This yeah. is just another group that might be trying to do the same thing you're doing. Yeah. Watching Colson and Rosalind match wits with each other, I felt a little bit like I did this summer when I was watching Avengers Age of Ultron yeah. and Downey was going against uh, Ultron where, yeah. where they were trying to size each other up and say wait wait I can outwit you I can I'm gonna outthink you seeing them go at it I think is gonna be something fun that's gonna be happening through this entire season I'm with you that scene when they were on the train was probably my favorite scene of this episode just how their banter going back mm -hmm. and forth like that one line when Coulson's like I'm not sure if this is still a KGB thing or is this like what, what's going on right now well yeah it went everywhere it was threatening it was funny and you got two actors working at the top of their game in that moment so that really went a long ways uh so daisy comes in and mm -hmm. i love that also colson as a surrogate for the audience has a great moment <laughs> where he's like i'm having trouble getting used to calling her daisy which is the exact thing we talked about <laughs> here last week like i know i'm gonna slip and call her sky but um daisy comes in and shield comes in and they basically they save they save joey they get him out of there yeah. but now here's the thing they save Joey, they put him in that pod, and eventually bring him to his room slash cell, basically. I felt like I was watching what? Willy Wonka in the Chuck Factory at the end when the <laughs> yeah. elevator shoots up. Yeah. <laughs> Look at all this, Charlie. <laughs> he took that really calm. I would have freaked out and like gone ape shit on everybody in that. <laughs> like, ape shit to me. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean like he was just like, oh, okay, I'll yeah. lay down. And then like he comes out of the room and they're like, that was hey, a you're sweet gonna have to. Room, though, by the way. A huge TV. Like I'm a like, I, I that was bigger than my there. first studio apartment. In LA. <laughs> oh yeah, look, I've lived in apartments in in Manhattan that were half the size of that. So <laughs> I mean, he has he has a sweet deal. But but this is my question: Is it real? How sweet of a deal this is this? Because this poor guy, <laughs> you know, he took some fish oil. Now he's got. Now he's an inhuman. Just got and, broken up by his boyfriend. Yeah. Br broken up with his boyfriend, mm -hmm. and now he's stuck here basically forever. Like they say, you're not going to go. You're not going <laughs> to leave. Even if you get your powers under control, you're probably never going to leave. And is that? I mean, I understand the practicality for public safety while they have to do that, but is that going to be an issue as Shield goes along? Can you really lock people up for that long? What's the morality of that? Well, no, you can't. Oh, yeah. oh, no, go on. Oh, no. I was just going to say, that's something you're going to have to address at some point because you just can't start rounding up in humans and left and right and just start keeping them there. So that's something that's going to come up. I, I hope we see more of him this season. I, I like him. I'd like to see more. But yeah, that's definitely something that Do you have any address. idea who he could be like in the comic books? Because I have no idea who he could be. <laughs> Well, they called him uh, Jose Gutierrez in the show. It was like he goes by Joey, but his name was Jose Gutierrez. Yeah. So at your prompting, I was actually I Googled the name Jose Gutierrez and just some dentist came up. So <laughs> I don't know <laughs> that he has a lot of war going back to the comic books, but it would be interesting to see if they tied him to a character that readers would be familiar with. Well, that yeah. dentist is going to get a lot of work now. He's going <laughs> to get a lot of patients coming in. But, you know, that's that is one of the one of the through lines that I liked this episode was somebody learning about their new abilities and, and having to cope with that and the way that Daisy and Mac and the and them asking for Lincoln to come back for one of the reasons being that he's good at breaking this sort of news to people and ingratiating them into their new powers. So watching this guy handle this new thing that he has to deal with for the rest of his life could carry us through season three as well. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that his boyfriend had broken up with him. Yeah. So there's also there's also they're doing a little bit of an analogy here between coming out as gay and coming out as uh, an inhuman. Yeah. They he even said like you know they they've had to, he's had to do something like this before although this will be a little different a little less accepting <laughs> but they do it in a good way well, yeah no it, it was it was way. handled in an environment and i like the last moment between him and sky where she he talks about how he can never have a beer again i can't have a beer with my friends again and then sky uh, comes in with a beer at the end it's nice to know there's <laughs> alcohol at that facility yes <laughs> well i think you i Get think your if you're working for shield you need it sometimes <laughs> you need it sometimes so <laughs> where he's going i think he might even register when the registration act comes up for all I like the that little tie in Civil War. Yeah. Oh, I New think humans? we might be talking a little bit about that a little later, too, with okay. some of our Twitter questions. <laughs> um, but also in this episode, you know, we find out a little bit more of what's happening in the world with this fish oil. Mm -hmm. And I know when we were watching, you seem to have a theory because they talk about how it was dispersed in the ocean and, and you kind of lit up with a, with a theory. <laughs> well, instantly I was like, Namor, <laughs> he's, they're going to probably bring in him, but then he's a mutant and he's you were saying. He's technically a mutant, so I don't know if this, I, would, I love Namor. 
you know, and oh, so I, I don't Namor. know. <laughs> Namor's cool. I love Namor. But I, I, it's the thing. He's technically mutant. Could, mutant. could they use him? Then I thought, the first thought was Triton. You know, I know, I don't think okay. we're going to see any of the royal family, anything like that. But Triton, it is would make likely. sense. Maybe at least a mention of his name on the show because of all this. It's and possible. if Namor is a mutant, then you're, you're by definition not allowed to use even the word mutant. Exactly. Like, you're like, you can't say the M word on this show. It's mm -hmm. just, it's an illegal thing that yeah. you're just not going to say so in human or anything else. Yeah. Yeah, so if he is, we'll be calling them specials, whatever they, the, the <laughs> use, they, the words they always use. So yeah. I really, really hope that they, d like, because with Daisy, they did, uh, like, from Sky to Daisy, I really hope they don't change Inhumans to New Humans, New Humans. <laughs> <laughs> Which will be difficult for even us to say. <laughs> <on this. laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're going to sound drunk, the New Humans. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, let's also talk about somebody who was waiting for Joe when, when he got in there. Bobby was there, and she yeah. was in a lab coat. And, and this was also, there was a lot of kind of lighter misdirect with her and Hunter in this yeah. episode. Because there's this idea, Hunter's not going to go see her. And also, Bobby, when it ended last season, was like, I can't do this anymore. So the second I saw her there in a lab coat waiting for him, I started to think, oh, has she removed herself from the field? Yeah. Like, was that the thing she can't do anymore? By the end of the episode, it doesn't seem like that's the case. Yeah. But uh, that, that was my first instinct when I saw her standing there in a lab coat helping this guy. I don't know what you guys thought. I don't know. I mean, I don't know how you guys feel, but like, I want to see Bobby, you know, in the field. She's tough as nails. She's amazing. I mean, as a doctor, I don't buy her with the, well she's not a doctor but like, yeah with the lab coat on and everything it's like that's not the bobby i want to see granted i think you know we do have the spinoff coming up sometime later i'm you know so i mean that could just be leading towards that because she did say it's like i, I want to come with you i'm, I'm okay i can is do that this. war like is ward going to be a big part of that spinoff you think because they're war no, oh, ward oh i'm sorry ward yeah 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 because they're that's their main deal. Like, they want to go out and kill him. Well, yeah, that's actually a good question because Hunter says basically that he has been assigned to go after Hydra. Mm -hmm. That's his deal. And if their spinoff, maybe their spinoff is like kind of like hunting Hydra. Maybe it's like, you know, their version of uh, them hunting Nazis, Nazi <laughs> hunters and things like that. I mean, that could that could be a cool spinoff. I still would rather them be on the show where they're already awesome and yeah. they bring a lot of energy to it. I mean, I don't know. How do you feel about them spinning off then? Right. I mean, and, and, and Bobby said she can't do this anymore. She clearly wasn't talking about Lance because that's still a thing that's going on, yeah. right? I mean, they're still doing it. And now it's just, do they go to the next level? And does that become another spinoff? It's something that I would actually vote for because they were two of the personalities on this show that I thought really had potential to do something else with it. Everybody on this show across the board impressed me, but their chemistry in particular was something that I looked at. Well, that great banter and then we finally see because we assume oh they're fighting again but yeah they're there it's like he ha he gives her back her old ring yeah. which is like now we're married again <laughs> which i actually thought was a nice little fun moment between them nice little fun character moment between the two of them now the other guy we got to talk about who's causing all sorts of trouble around Lash. the world Oh, I was gonna say. Well, oh. we have to talk about Lash. Well, no, let's start with Lash. I was gonna go to I was gonna go to uh, uh, Fitz, but let's talk. Let's oh, talk no, about Lash. Let's no, because we uh, there's that great scene where kind of our storylines merge, where Coulson's on the train with Rosalind, and he gets the call, and we realize, oh, there's an Inhuman out there, and Scott uh, Daisy has You're gone. Right. Look You're at right. that. <laughs> Daisy has gone to talk to Lincoln, and Lash shows up, and it turns out that Lash is the one who is hunting down these other Inhumans. So in the comic books, and uh, I'm, I'm sure you guys know about it, but Lash is uh, an inhuman uh, for millions, hundreds of years, thousands of years, and he thinks that um, becoming an inhuman is a rite of passage, but only for the right type of people. Like if you are um, worthy. So, so the he, fact that anyone taking fish oil can <laughs> suddenly possibly become he's inhuman is going to drive him nuts. He's, gonna, yeah. he's furious about it. So he's going around finding all these people coming out of their cocoons, and he's waiting to see if they've got what it takes um, up to his standards, and if they don't, he's killing them. Yes, I, I like that they're putting kind of like a religious spin on this, like, are you worthy? It's, this, this is something that's so special to me. One of the things I thought, and I was a little nervous thinking this, and then at, when we were done watching this episode, you kind of said the same thing. I was not really a fan of his look. I know we were talking about like, oh, it looks like their budget's a lot yeah. bigger, and they're just see, it looks, looks like some random, like they just painted his head, you know, head, head to toe nope. with some. That's why they just like covered him with darkness a lot yeah. and like shadow. But I really was sad. So maybe later on in the season he'll get better looking. 
Well, right now, yeah, they, whenever you keep a new character like or an effects-heavy character in the dark like that, yeah. you know they're trying to... And as good as the new planes looked and everything, <laughs> he did look a little... I fun. felt a little Mighty Morphin Power Rangers <laughs> <he> watching, <laughs> yeah, yeah. to be honest with you. But the character himself of Lash was yeah. really intrigued. Like you guys mentioned, it's like he's not just some ogre who's going around killing people. Actually, he has a purpose, and he wants to... We had a, he reminded me of like the most diehard Star Trek fan you'd ever meet, <laughs> where <laughs> if they meet somebody who loves the J.J. Abrams Star Trek, they're going <laughs> to annihilate them on yeah. the face of the earth. Yeah. You can only like the real Star Trek. So yeah. it's it, it's it, it's an he clearly is a bad guy, but there's more to him than just being like a dumb henchman. Yeah, he's got he's got a goal. He's got most. Um, he's not after a fight like that. He's not the most inconspicuous character. I will say that. <laughs> no, that back but, here is gonna stand. Yeah, there. yeah and, and he's played by Matthew Willie, who uh, who used to play in the. He was an NFL player for like 14 years. Oh wow, got I didn't even, I didn't even catch that. Kind of looked yep. a little Sonic the Hedgehog like. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 A little, a little much Street Fighter <laughs> too. Also, yeah. <laughs> So, so Lash, we were a little, like, we, we love the character, a little iffy on the look, it seems. But, you know, I think he's going to get better. I'm really excited about the character. He's definitely um, collecting all the best in humans that he can, and they will fight up against uh, Daisy and her team. And also, Daisy. because it's not Rosalind's team uh, uh, doing this, and it's not Coulson's team killing these other people, they're going to have to, at some point, have a meet up where they're gonna have to team up and take him on which will be will be good which was a great device when they were having that meeting on the train and they yeah. both got the phone call about yeah. this incident at the <laughs> same time it's like you guys are gonna have to be friends at some point yeah um before we move on to maybe some of the other uh, shakier things with the episode we do have to talk about Fitz. I loved Fitz. I love Fitz in this. He's like so much stronger. He's like a big Indiana Jones guy. He's going out there. He's like risking his life. He's tricking bad guys for the love of his life. I mean, he has gone. Well, let's put it this way. Fitz has evolved. Fitz is, this was the toughest we've seen, seen Fitz. And look, we know he's capable. We've seen him out in the field before. But we've never really, to this level, seen him on his own. Where he's basically, it's, I mean, they didn't call him ISIS, but it basically seemed like an ISIS-type group. They said they're destroying, like, relics in Iraq and stuff like yeah. that. And he's willing to walk in there and face these people head on. But like mm -hmm. you said, it's all about love. Well, like I said, this with last season, I the whole like his whole mind being not right, and that I felt like at times it kind of dragged on a little bit. I wasn't a fan. Fitz was cool, but I was just like, eh, whatever. I loved him in this episode. Oh, good, yeah. I loved how he really stood up. I don't expect him to be like a Mac or anything like that. You know what I mean? But at the same time, I like that he stood firm. Like when he uh, he was talking to those guys, and he's basically just like looking him right in the eyes. Like he's not going to stand down. You know, he's just like, I want what I want, and you're going to give it to me, basically. Yeah, Fitz was, I, I liked Fitz early on in this episode. He's also my entry point into one of the things that I wasn't as big a fan of, which is the way that his character left off in this particular episode, where I just get upset when you just grab a gun, you start shooting stuff. Please don't bang on the giant rock. <laughs> yeah. What was up with him, like, kicking down the door, though? Wasn't that supposed to be locked? Didn't Max <laughs> say, hey, I specifically locked up this room so that nobody... <laughs> yeah, that's so holds that's, back. That, that's about I, it. I mean, don't get me wrong. That'll stop I like the, the whole... Like I'm big macho guy. I'm like coming after you, like Simmons, and but like that it was kind of. Well, I am with you with the whole shooting everything, you know. But at the same time, I liked when he was like, you know, facing the 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 rock, yeah. and how he was just like he started screaming. There was a lot of emotion. I thought it was a really good scene. The the, the acting job he the, 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 that he did, I yeah. thought was tremendous. It's it, really it just uh, it just. Please don't bang on the rock. <laughs> well, he was, you know what was great? Because last season started where he was without Simmons, too, and he didn't know where she was. And this time, he he knows more what happened to him. But, if, if you know, each season starts with these kind of different feelings that he's had about Simmons leaving him in some way. And, you know, these poor kids, will they ever just get together? <laughs> he, um, But he gets that parchment. He gets that parchment. Basically, he, uh, he pulls one over on the ISIS types. And he uh, has that at the end, and it says death. That's the thing. That's the answer to this, which doesn't seem like much of an answer. Although Fitz can speak Hebrew, he knows that. he knows how to read Hebrew. <laughs> <laughs> Found he that. that. Um, but yeah, other than that, I mean, what do we think that? What do we think? What do you think that might mean? I, I give me a number of things. I guess I really don't even know. Like I was watching that scene, I was just as confused. I'm like death. I have no idea. Like 
initially I think I like, oh, Apocalypse. I'm like, no, that's not gonna work. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. <I> <laughs> Apocalypse. Another mutant. Damn yeah. <laughs> Damn it. So yeah, I'm I'm just as confused, but I like that I'm that confused. I like that I don't know what direction they're going in right now with this. It's a good test for him though. It's a good ruse. If somebody else is trying to plant that, trying to stop him from investigating this further, it's a where he's clearly not gonna stop. He's clearly gonna shoot a lot of doors in shield to get to where he wants to go. Yeah, so he's knock let's see where all. this is going. Death is literally not gonna stop this guy yeah. from seeking out what happened to Simmons. So I want to talk about some things maybe we didn't like about the episode. And one of them for me is also with Fitz. As much as I loved his stuff in this episode, and I think I spoke about this last week, my desire for like whenever you can go darker and grittier and stuff like that. And I feel like there was a missed opportunity when he pulled one over on those terrorists in which what if he did trade something that they can use actually against yeah. people? Like, what if he had gone so far as to give them actual technology that they could use and how that would affect his soul? Like, what am I willing to give up to find Simmons, the love of my life? I don't know. I think that would have been a little more interesting and that would have been, that's kind of a missed opportunity. Even the Bobby stuff, I felt like what if it was she isn't ready to get back in the field yet. That might be a little, that that would have been more interesting to me than just that we were kind of just led to believe she wasn't. I mean, I agree with you about the Fitz thing um, when he was trading in. I also would have been ecstatic if it was something that he really shouldn't have gotten rid of. Um, but I guess the thing that I had a problem with was uh, everybody else was blinded and did he just close his eyes and that was, and that and that's how he escaped I with everything? I what but, was going on. Um, I will say with the whole Fitz thing, I, I agree. I know where you're, I see where you're coming from, and I agree, but it still fits. Like, I don't want him to lose his identity. I like that he's getting a little tougher, but at the end of the day, again, he's not Ward. He's not Mac. I wouldn't mm. want him to go just, like, full rogue and go that dark. But if he is ever going to go dark, it's going to be for Simmons. Mm. Oh, of course. So there you go. What were some other things? Like, what was, was there other stuff that you weren't crazy about? Neil? I mean, besides the Lash costume, but I feel like that's going to get better. Um, and it's Halloween's right around the corner. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're going to be selling those in stores. You're going to get a prime <laughs> Lash costume. We'll come on zero. set dressed as Lash. <laughs> No, I mean, I liked it. I really liked this episode. I was really excited about it. It was a strong opening it. episode. It really was, and I think they really needed a strong opening like yeah. this. I was a huge fan, and the the, the, the fifth scene when he does pull one over in Morocco, it played out clunkier than I would have wanted to. I thought the opening action sequence was great. I liked the last action sequence. I didn't hate the costume that much, but that scene in Morocco, the way he escaped, it just it, it felt a little I don't, staged or something like that, but I get you're not going to knock every scene out of the park. You don't have months and months to shoot these things. The thing that I was most concerned about with this show that I was pleasantly surprised is that they never forced the references from the Marvel Cinematic Universe into this show. Yes. We got allusions to Avengers Age of Ultron. We got allusions to Ant-Man and mm -hmm. we got to see President Ellis yeah. and it never felt like, oh, they just want to make sure that we know this yeah. is connected to a really popular film world. It felt organic to me. That's a huge win for the opening I of the like season. That. I like that. I like that because that's always been kind of a problem with this yeah. show because they kind of like shove that down your throat and uh, mm -hmm. no, I thought it was pretty false. They've gotten more subtle with them. Like we were joking last week that, you know, there's always that line where a certain Asgardian would be like, <laughs> You know, it's and it's like, calm down, guys. We know what it's about. Um, you know, uh, uh, one other thing I want to bring up that actually I didn't before, uh, Coulson's new hand. What did we all think oh, of I'm, Coulson's new right. hand? That's right. I am so disappointed with this hand. I guess no one told Stark yet because <laughs> I uh, I don't know. That's just so disappointing. I, I, I well, That's the thing. Like, do we know exactly how close they're working to with, like, the Avengers right now? Because I know they're, they're not really underground, but they kind of are yeah. still. So do we know, like, who's funding these guys exactly? Like, what do they have to work with? I have to assume at some point we're going to see a more higher-end hand for, for Coulson. Yeah, yeah, I was disappointed with the quality of the <laughs> hand. I mean, in, in, in film terms, it was somewhere between the one-armed man from The Fugitive and Chubbs from Happy Gilmore. <laughs> It's a hand we were working with. I hope I hope maybe he can call one of the Pims and get upgraded to something better by the end of the season. Oh yeah. Oh. Hank Pim. Like totally. I think that that's who you're gonna like that's who they're gonna make the hand, right? He'll make a better hand than yeah. Stark and Definitely. Um, you know what? It, it's funny. He did say it was his third hand, so hopefully yeah. the fourth hand that we will get that. <laughs> and I think eventually, also just for effects reasons, yeah. he'll eventually get a really good working oh, yeah. hand. What about Maze <laughs> like never Luke coming back? Well, that was the uh, that was the one last thing I wanted to bring in before we got to the uh, the Twitter some of the Twitter stuff. 
uh, no May in the episode. Mm-hmm. And she was another one who, at the end of last season, she went off with her husband, Andrew, and she's still gone. And, you know, Mac makes a comment uh, about the team falling apart at some point. And I guess that's one of the things he's alluding to, just people have gone aw- off and you don't hear from them. I yeah. mean, she might be back. I think she she will be. That's like the new poster, she's in it, right? Yeah, she's yeah she'll it. be Definitely. back. She's going to be changed, though, at some... You know, you have to assume, because, I mean, that was her big thing. Like, she couldn't just relax and be the, the May of old. So the fact that she's still on vacation says a lot I mean, as to, like, where her character's at right now. She only Mentally. packed a bikini. I, so I'm really happy for her. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not going to complain about that. But she... I'm, I'm usually Captain Optimism anyway, but that, to me, is a positive, is that they mm. don't feel the need... Like, like, they're confident enough in the storylines they have that they don't need to throw every character at you yeah. in every episode. Some characters can take a few episodes off here and there and we like all these intertwining storylines they're eventually going to tie up but right now we don't have to show you everything in our hand is a happy may a may that's lost a step in the field though is a happy may someone who's going to you know only kick 90 percent ass instead of 100 percent ass you know what i mean 90 percent is still pretty that's good still pretty good <laughs> i'm still giving her a good percentage yeah. i don't know i would like to see it, when she comes back, like I said, she's going to have to be changed in some way. And I would like to see her maybe a little, you know, a, a, a little different, maybe a little happier. And maybe that does affect work in the field. But eventually Ward will rear his head again and she'll want to kill him. <gasps> oh, my so. God. Do you think, ooh, do you think that she's going to, like, be pregnant and then Ward, like, shoots her in the belly? And then that's when we find out she was pregnant and it kills her baby. And then <laughs> she goes dark. back to dark. You just went full dark. <laughs> I we'll said, want I, mean, dark. I did want it dark, to be fair. <laughs> that is dark. Yeah. I mean, like, she, like, that was, like, a big. It would be a callback to like season Did one. She wanted to have a kid. She wanted to have a kid, like and then like she. I'm surprised Maybe. your hair didn't turn jet black <laughs> as you were giving. I, that you know prognosis. what? It's like I'm terrified, but I also kind of love it because it's so dark. I did say I want <laughs> dark, and I, if I ask for it, I shouldn't be. <laughs> well, you know what? There are a couple other things I want to talk about the episode, but some of them were in our Twitter questions. So why don't we take a look at those okay. and uh, address some of that? Here's our first one from Stephen Hall. Uh, biggest surprise tonight was seeing President Ellis for the first time since um, his M- Iron Man Iron Three. Ma- <laughs> Iron Man Three. Got to jump on those abbreviations. <laughs> Speech uh, really got the ball rolling for Civil War. So, uh, uh, Mike, how do you feel that's going to uh, pan out? Like some of the stuff he said tonight, and it's going to how do you think it's going to affect? Civil War coming up. Well, I, you kind of mentioned this earlier with the whole like Registration yeah. Act because if you've read Civil War, you know that it's basically guys with uh, hidden uh, secret identities versus guys like Tony Stark where the world knows who they are. Obviously, they don't have the rights to like hundreds and thousands of characters in the Marvel Universe, so it's going to be a lot more streamlined. They're going to use the Inhumans, and I think that's going to be part of it. I think it's going to play a huge role into it. And like you said earlier, I like the fact that it didn't feel shoehorned with like adding him into this scene. It did something incredible because it made me feel like Civil War is bigger than I already yeah. imagined Civil War to be. I saw yeah. a trailer for Civil War D23, oh. and for the most part, I thought it was awesome. My only question about Civil War is what are the stakes going to be when, is it just going to be superheroes scrimmaging against each other? Like, really mad, but hey, we're all cool at the end of the day. No, this is going to be even bigger than the superheroes we already know from the MCU. So that's a very intriguing, it was a great way to leave off this episode. So do we think that the Civil War is going, and this series is going to affect Civil War, and Civil War is going to affect this series in a larger way than the movies and the shows have affected each other before, do you think? I think it was a big yes. win for for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I don't think that's going to be the way policy works, but I think it was a nice win from both story groups kind of saying, hey, you know what, we're just going to throw this in there, and then you guys do what you want with it. Okay, setting that up. And always good to see William Sadler in anything. <laughs> he was I'm dead saying, from yeah. Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. <laughs> yeah. He's got to love that dude. He's always, he's always great. Okay, so let's uh, let's see what else we got here. Do you guys and Lady Thank you. think we will see aliens or guys like uh, Yun- Yunda from oh. Yunda? Did I mispronounce him? Okay. Uh, from uh, Guardians of the Galaxy pop up with Gemma on that planet. And this is a big thing I want to say for these Twitter questions because we were already seeing other people tweeting. Where is Gemma? Where is Simmons? What are you? What are you thinking? Obviously, not stuck in a symbiotic suit. <laughs> <laughs> um, there is no venom. I thought there is no venom. Damn it. Uh, but I thought maybe she would have been Moonstone. Uh, not Obviously, she's not going to be Moonstone anymore. But then I thought maybe it was a portal to, um, to the Scroll planet. Okay. And for those of you who don't know, uh, Scroll and Kree are two alien races that really don't get along uh, in the comics, or m- most of them. And then the Scroll come back and basically 
wipe out all the Avengers and they have the power to like look like the human and attain uh, all their memories and all their thoughts uh, to become them. And uh, I don't know, I thought maybe, I really thought Simmons was gonna die. I thought she was dead and I thought they were gonna bring back a scroll, but I have no idea. Well, I like where what heads at. She's I love at. the scrolls. I love the whole like secret invasion thing going on. I mean, I'm I, I'm on board for it. I'll tell you this, Jeff Daniels from The Martian ain't looking for her anytime soon. <laughs> she, this is another <laughs> dimension entirely. I have no idea where this is, but it's not one of the eight and a half planets I learned about in school. Now, do we think though that it's gonna link up with some Guardians of the Galaxy Characters. That's a very real possibility. Yeah. That was my first thought when I saw the planet. I was either I was thinking Thor, and then I was thinking, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy is more recent and it might fit better with what Agents of Shield is doing with the Inhumans. We were. It, it's funny because the second we saw that planet, we were all like racking our brains, like, <laughs> what does it look like that we've already seen? Have we seen this planet already? Um, you know what? I, I I hope it does too because you know we'll see how it it it, it fits into that world but um it's driving yeah. me insane it's I driving us no all a little idea. insane we, we have no s- clear answer it, and this is driving us nuts will that be stretched out through the rest of the season or do you think we'll get some sort of resolution fairly quickly as to where she is i think we're going to get it back fast i think we're going to get it back i think it's going to be even less than that really I th- yeah. I'm going for longer really i think they're gonna, not, not like a full season but i, I could go like maybe six or seven it would be funny if just like every episode you just got like 10 seconds of her just running (laughs) like where the hell is she well that's why i feel like we got to get her back fast because i don't know how long they want to leave her out on this planet the question is what they're going to have to do or maybe sacrifice to get her back and will it be worth it well, I guess we're gonna find out. We oh, did, you, did you have a thought? Or? <laughs> no, no. I saw no, you raise no, your hand. No, okay. So let's get the let's get our next question. Uh, this is from Nick Vargas. There are always Avengers references, but do you think Daredevil will ever be referenced on the show? Uh, Mark, what do, you, what do you think? About this I one? do not think that we're gonna hear the term "Hell's Kitchen" on this show <laughs> anytime soon. I think that's a that's a Netflix thing. I think this is this is a totally different. Invite now. Look, obviously, those universes. It is the same universe technically. I don't think Matt Murdock and his boys are gonna show up anytime soon on Agents of Shield. Yeah, Netflix feels like they're really building their own world. We got Jessica Jones coming out, which there was a really fun teaser for this right. week. Punisher's um, coming out. Yeah, there's all these other characters that they're throwing in, there, and I feel like they're going to keep these. I mean, that's the darker, grittier. Marvel stuff. That's where someone who's pregnant will get shot in the stomach. And, <laughs> yeah. You know, it's in that world. So, I mean, I, I think we're all pretty much on the same yeah. page with that one. Yeah. Mm. Okay. I don't think it's gonna happen. So, no, I think I think we're not going to get any uh, even veiled Daredevil references. We didn't get Venom. We didn't get Venom. We didn't get Venom. <laughs> didn't get I don't Venom. think we're going to get Daredevil. Well, you know, anything could still happen on that planet. We don't know what the. She could be changed. I mean, she could be changed. I just find it really hard. To imagine how, <laughs> unless if a scroll takes over her body and will and mind and then makes out with uh, Fitz and then he realizes that she's a scroll and is destroyed by it. I oh, like you writing on Agent yeah, I think, yeah, get I love hire this woman. <laughs> I like this. I like all these. See, that's the thing. All these theories that you throw out, they're just, they're great. So I'm all about this. I like that. I like anything that's going to upset these characters. <laughs> as much as I love them all, anything that's going to throw them off their game. You're sick. I know. Well, I got problems. <laughs> um, so I think, I think we covered about everything from the episode. Um, yeah. I, look, I think this was a great start. I think this is a great season premiere, and we've, you know, we've been left with a lot of mysteries. The, the Gemma thing, the, the new team that Rosalind's leading. So I'm very excited to see where this goes. Uh, so yeah, you know what, when we want to know what you're thinking, so please keep sending out that hashtag, uh, Collider AOS. We want to know uh, what your thoughts on some of our theories are and everything like that. Let's keep the conversation going. So I guess uh, we should wrap it up here. Mark, why don't you tell the people where they can find you? Uh, on Twitter, you can find me at 5150Ellis, and you can get tickets to my stand-up tour at markellislive.com. Next cities I'll be in are Austin, Tempe, West Palm Beach, and one I forgot. <laughs> go go see this man at these shows. I'll be on the planet where Simmons is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a good funny bone there. Mike. Uh, I will be here in Los Angeles. I'm not going anywhere. You can find me <laughs> at Mr. Michael Alexis on Twitter. Aaron? Yeah, find me at Twitter at Agent Fenton. And, oh, my God, if anybody knows where Simmons is, let me know. <laughs> yeah, we're clearly going We're going nuts here. We, we clearly are dying to know. Um, and you can follow me on Twitter at 
The Real Will Link. You can find out everything you want to know that I'm up to there. So until then, thank you for watching, and we will see you next week for another Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. recap.